Hi, Bill. How are you? Good, good. How you doing? I'm amazing. So nice <laughs> to see your face. Right? <laughs> Likewise. Yes. It's so awesome when we finally get to see, uh, have human connection and see someone. You just get more right? excited all day. <laughs> right? It's something about putting a face to the voice, you know, to the emails, yes. you know. So, yeah, yeah. Yes. Cool. <laughs> Absolutely. How are you feeling today? What's going on? How are you handling the quarantine? Good, good. Hanging in there, you know, mm -hmm. just patiently waiting for it to be over. You know, mm -hmm. I think like most of us are, we finally missing that connection of like being in the same room, you know. I've been yeah. definitely missing brunch, you know. That's what Absolutely. I'm, <laughs> yes. I'm missing that and I'm missing the day parties because I'm here in Atlanta. I'm missing oh. the day parties. <laughs> oh, <Yes>. man. <laughs> I'm missing a good time. I mean, neighbors are starting to say hi to each other now. You know, that's not the norm all the time. My neighbors really? were talking, we're meeting each other. We're becoming okay. a community. Yeah, yeah, yeah. You know, that's that's how it is, too. I noticed that just stepping outside to get the mail, people are more nice to speak. You know, they normally keep it moving, you know, walk with a swiftness. But now, mm -hmm. yeah. <laughs> yes, absolutely. Well, we're so happy to have you. I'll tell you a little bit about what we're doing. So okay. on behalf of my company, Faith um, Global, um, it's a, the foundation for artistic talent and empowerment. And so what we do is we provide financial services and mentorship programs to artists. Dope. And so when we came across you, um, you were referred by one of our board members, uh, the next favors. He just yeah, told yeah. me the amazing things that you were doing. And so I thought <laughs> that you were a great role model to kind of, you know, share some light about your side of the industry, which is we really appreciate you within the industry, but I don't feel like you guys get enough recognition for what you do because you know people see I'm an actress so they see the glitz, right. they see the glamour they see the actor and they think that you know they did the job when in reality right, right, right. the actor <laughs> is like <laughs> their role is like not as large I mean yeah everybody has a part to play but everybody has a part to play we're a team and so I feel like right. some of the team members are not recognized so I was more than grateful when you decided to come on here and we're hoping you can inspire this group of people today um, with yeah. some of your experiences. I would love to honor. Yeah, we definitely um, behind I know everybody's talking about the diversity, you know, in front of the camera, and even in the writer's room, but post production, is still got a little ways to go, you know, between mm -hmm. from editors to, you know, visual effects, not that many of us in that anyway, mm -hmm. but definitely whatever I can do to be of assistance and share mm -hmm. a light on, you know, mm -hmm. let them know we out here. You know, we yes. out here working, you know. We out here, we are building <laughs> and I love that. Yes, and you're a great role model and a testament to what can what can possibly be done and what others can do if they look to people that are leading the way. So, you know, just kind of talking. So for those of you that are just coming in, we get thousands of people that watch this on the replay. But we have okay. Bill Hudson here with us. He's a VFX producer. He works in visual effects. For those of you, you're going to learn about this career. <laughs> Yeah. Some people, they don't even know. Some they don't even know. know. <laughs> My mom still don't even know. <laughs> <laughs> I love that. No, but it's facts, though. So let's talk about it. Again, I dropped his Instagram handle. I pinned it there. I also pinned mine, as well as the Fake Global Instagram handle. So make sure you follow him, show him some love, and just stay connected. Um, so let's just jump in with you, Bill. Can you kind of just talk to us? the audience about kind of how you got started in the entertainment industry like as a producer as a visual effects producer okay yeah i started off as a, a artist so growing up growing up i did a lot of uh computers like graphic design things like that mm -hmm. um i grew up in the age where they was like you, you gotta pick a trade you know when you was out when it's time to graduate you know they say go to college you know? mm -hmm. and you know the lesson that the philosophy was put that if you at least find something you want to do, you know, you go to school, get mm -hmm. trained for it, and then you can get a job doing it. So back then mm -hmm. in 04, I believe like Toy Story had came out. And um, and I was like, okay, somebody got to make, you know, this animation. It's a bunch of credits. Somebody's getting paid to do this. Right. As well as video games. I used to play Madden and everything. I was like, same thing. You it's were credits. thinking that? Your mind was working like that? Yeah, because, they, because you know, back then it was just like, you can do whatever you want, <laughs> but then you got to get realistically, like, how can you do what you want? So I just applied that formula. Like, if I can find somewhere to teach it and get a degree in it, then I should be qualified. Um, it was kind of, like, hard because people didn't know, like, what it was on that side, but I got blessed mm -hmm. that 
it was some guys that had were shooting music videos and nothing there. They was like, we got a green screen. We need somebody to, you know, do the background, do the effects. Mm-hmm. I was like, hey, I'm here. And then from there, I was able to build my portfolio because they was mm-hmm. like work with artists like Little Wayne, T Pain, and them. Mm-hmm. So it was like enough to get the portfolio up. And then eventually being in Orlando, you become like a big fish in a small pond because then, like I said, the budgets, they can't afford to have you. And you're trying to like grow, you know, to work on shows. Eventually you want to work on the big, they just made the trip to LA. So I then got to start over though, because out here is all about who you know and what, you know, they let you in. You got to be vouched for to get in. So start over, um, make, seen a couple posts it was called staffmeup.com that's like mm-hmm. the go-to mm-hmm. uh if you need Staff work <laughs> and so got a couple uh jobs off there and then started building it and then got in a couple networks like an mtv the travel mm-hmm. channel doing their uh, logos and graphics and then eventually it was just kind of like what's going to be the end game like mm-hmm. i was like i want to just keep moving up you know mm-hmm. and so i was like visual effects management you know to be good on the producer side. So I just made the switch and mm-hmm. was like, you know, you be a coordinator, learn the pipeline. Like now in the management, I was pretty much doing it myself, mm-hmm. but now it was like, now I'm going to do it for, you know, a company. And right. so I just made the transition as a coordinator. You learn how to track shots. And my show says we have 100 VFX shots. You're like keeping an eye on them, making sure they're on time and on budget. And once you get that, then they promote you and you become a producer. The same mm-hmm. thing, you just more responsibility at a grander scale. Nice, nice. I love the way you broke that down. I mean, you pretty Mm -hmm. much gave us this whole trajectory. If somebody was in your shoes, maybe a couple years back, 10 years or so, whatever, they can follow that blueprint that you just lined up. So that was super dope. Thank you for just being transparent. Can you talk about you know, speak to, because you said, you know, as a child, because most people's brains are not working like that, where it's like, okay, <laughs> this video game is going, how, right. who's, how, who's making these voices? Like, I didn't think like that. I was just right. watching it, and I was like, my cartoon show on mommy. Please turn my Listen. cartoon show on. Like, <laughs> I wasn't thinking about them elements. So, no. like, did it's you real. always know that? Like, did you always no. know No, keeping it at 100, it was really like, I grew up in Baltimore, Baltimore City. Okay. And so in Baltimore, Maryland, if you ever seen the wire, the stereotype that goes with that, this comes from based on reality. So I was like, how can I just, you know, again, there was this, how can I just do a job where I have enough money to live? That was like the initial thinking. So I was like, oh, I went to a trade school. So you learn like, I was like electrical engineering. Everybody has electricity. You'll have a job for years. Mm-hmm. <laughs> you know? right. And I was also playing the drum at my church. I was a musician. And it was the same thing. They was like, how do you get paid to do these things you really like? Mm-hmm. And it wasn't until I went to a college fair. And it was like all these tables set up. Like, oh, this university. You know, they give me the pen, the book, and the sign up. They will email you. And then I went to one booth. It was like this 50-inch screen TV. And it was just their reel of, like, graduates who worked on mm-hmm. Pirates of the Caribbean. And EA Sports, people that work at, you know, all these companies, the dream places that you was like, I admire that. I would like to do that. So it took, right. like, basically seeing that it's possible. You know, once mm-hmm. I saw that was possible, then I was, like, shifting gears. Now I was, like, trying to negotiate with parents, trying to say, look, you know, you say go to school, I found a school. <laughs> mm-hmm. You know, and then I have to, like, look up statistics. Like, yo, you know how many people get jobs after they're done this and things like that. Right. And so, like, by me trying to convince them and finding out more, it was actually showing me that I could actually do it. You Right. In the beginning, mm-hmm. no, nah, I was just trying to get, you know, trying to find a career that you can make a living in. Because you really don't know until you know what's exposed to. And I think once I found out that was at least an option, mm-hmm. then I, like, took it and ran with it. Wow, that's super dope. I mean, it sounds like you just had to believe in yourself first, too. And you and you began to believe in yourself more and more as you began to, like, do this research and try to, like, make this layout for you the way you intended for it to be. And it yeah. seems like you're doing a really good job at that. So let's take notes, guys. <laughs> <laughs> let's, let's take some notes. So can yeah. you kind of speak to, like, because most people, they don't even realize this element, you know, of art that you're in. So can you kind of speak to what your day looks like, like, as a visual effects producer, director? What does that look like when you go to work? So when I go into work, is basically, they'll say, we have a, we'll have a show coming up. There'll be producers from the network side or show side that says, hey, we got this, uh, my script calls for some um, driving plates, driving <laughs> 
They were like, we don't want to drive on the rain city. We don't want to pay the location. We figure it's cheaper to do it on a green screen. They was like, can you add a, the, uh, the road, drive it behind it? And mm -hmm. pretty much you take a look at the footage, you bid it out to say, yeah, we could do that for this many shots. It'll cost this. Mm -hmm. If they approve it, then they said, cool. We got a mm -hmm. team of artists that will put on it, um, do the work, exchange back and forth till they approve the shots. It'll be delivered. Mm -hmm. And it kind of is like that. Sometimes mm. it's a show, sometimes it's a film, sometimes, you know, it's different projects. But during the day to day, my job is when I come in is to either do one of those tasks, to either manage to make sure we're on budget, mm -hmm. um, bid out a new project if a new show comes in, bid it out to see how much it'll cost, mm -hmm. and then or then deliver something. So that's not nice. like day to day. Awesome. Super dope. I love that. You know, most people, they see you and I'm sure they look at your page or just look at your credits or your resume or whatever. And they like, wow, like, I mean, he be working. He's on this show. He did that show and all these familiar shows that we watch on TV. And I know they probably think like, oh, yeah, he must got a cousin in the industry or he must know somebody. It probably came easy for him. Can you kind of speak to like, because most people think that they think it's just a painted, easy picture. They don't know the grizzly and the grind, <laughs> the investment, shooting in the gym with nobody in right. there with you know, nobody you know, <laughs> you know that's let me yeah yeah like you know sometimes you have to tell family that they were thinking they see it but like listen it's a lot of hours put in like anybody that knows me like when i was in school that's how crazy the school was it was a 24 7 school right mm -hmm. and they're telling you you have lecture four hours and you have lab four hours they're saying the work that you're doing in the lab is not enough for you to pass the class. Meaning that if we give you a tutorial on how to uh, light a scene for day, they were like, here's your four hours. And the next thing you know, you your four hours is up. And you're not even like close to making a, a passing grade. So you already had to start staying there. Like I lived in that school, slept there mm -hmm. to learn the things that I need to learn because they only giving you the tools. It's up to you what you do, mm -hmm. just like anything. Mm -hmm. So over the years, there's like, tutorials, there's classes. I'm just going to like seminars, listen to people like some I ILM just finished working on Transform. They're giving a presentation like how these workflows, you know, what they did to get it done. Because a lot of mm -hmm. things you learn in school or on your own is in the sense of if it's perfect uh, perfect variables, right? The most mm -hmm. tutorials are somebody mm -hmm. catered into that. Real world, they're rushing, the screen ain't lit, you know, things ain't, you know, makeup and cosmetic, everything is not perfect. So you still mm -hmm. have to learn those, you know, experience. So it took a while, you know, to get there. And like, yeah. it's also a trust thing too, because you're, mm. LA is such a, uh, like when I would say like, you gotta know somebody, it's literally somebody has to vouch for you because everybody's job on the line out here. Mm. Like year one people, I always tell them, I say, yo, just keep, just do what you gotta do to say at least past one year. Mm -hmm. Because when people come out to do lunch, they say, I'm moving out here, I'm going to... It's like nobody wants to feel responsible for your livelihood when you move out mm -hmm. here. So everybody's like, I'll see what I can do. You know, good luck with that. But if you're out here like one year and they see you doing it and they see you like doing it on your own, they'll go to bat. Actually, I heard somebody is looking for this. Look, I know somebody mm -hmm. that's like, hey, yeah. like, they're like overextending themselves. Yeah. So it took time and the hours that I put in Mm -hmm. It's just a reflective of why mm -hmm. I'm here. Like, it's definitely not. Like, the shows that you see is like three to six months worth of mm -hmm. like back and forth, you know, pushing late nights, overtime, you know, to get, you know, what you see on the screen. So, in wow. the end, yeah, you can say I got the credit. But what did you do to get that credit? It's a lot of yeah. hours. <laughs> yes. yes, and I love that. It sounds like you've just been willing to put the work in no matter what because you had a vision for yourself and you just made that vision possible. So yeah. it's kind of like, you know, you, I'm sure you faced adversity along your journey, you know, and I'm sure somebody yeah. that's going to watch this is facing some form of adversity. Can you kind of speak to how you maybe some adversity that you did face? It hasn't been an easy journey for you as well as how you overcame those things. Good. Two biggest things that I've faced out here is that the biggest, like you learn that timing is an X factor. So if it's like you can know everybody and you can be talented, but if mm -hmm. they having a hire freeze or if they not looking, you know, somebody like we just hired somebody, you can mm -hmm. go without, you know, work until our next show, like mm -hmm. the season's out here. 
So timing um, was like a big thing, but then it's like figuring out how can you keep yourself busy, um, valuable, so when the timing comes back around, mm-hmm. I can say if you stay ready, you ain't gotta get ready. Mm-hmm. And definitely um, just uh, people trusting, you know, that was like a big thing. Like it just took a while. It took somebody being in a position to be like, I got you. You know what mm-hmm. I mean? Like. I know you, I've seen you, you know, your things because before that, nobody, you know, does it. <laughs> so you definitely have to make sure you're a reflection of that somebody is willing to go to bat for you, you know, and mm-hmm. your work is going to speak for itself, your reputation, you want to be known, like, nobody wants to lose that job over a recommendation. So you're doing whatever you can to make sure that if you vouch for me, I'm going to make you look good, you know. I love that. It seems like, I mean, along this journey, you're extremely wise man. You learned so many different things. Can you kind of like <laughs> maybe just share, if you can go back in time and not in a place of regret, but if you yeah. can go back and tell your younger self something, what would that be? Because I'm sure it's like a younger version of you, of Bill here on the phone, listening yeah. to this, like, you know, needing some type of guidance. So what is this something that you would have told yourself, uh, you know, years ago? Um, I would tell myself, like, at the end of the day, nobody else is going to, nobody has to live this life but me. So mm-hmm. don't listen to, you know, what other people think, you know, wow. don't try. Because I was like, I was very flexible. Like, I'm going to try this, I'm going to try that, I'm going to try that. But in the end, it's like, I know what I'm capable of. I know what I can learn. You know, I can know what mm-hmm. I can do. So it's, it's essentially just trust myself, your instinct you know, a lot more mm-hmm. sooner. Mm-hmm. Like, I didn't have to, mm. you know, sometimes they say it makes you, you know, better, but it's just the encouragement that, like, yo, you got this. Like and That's a word. Like, you know That's what I mean? That's a word. <laughs> hey, that one really just spoke to me. Just trust yourself. Like, you know, yeah. that's something that we come in and out of, I feel like, along our journey as we evolve. We learn more to trust ourselves more. You know, we make, you know, certain decisions like, dang, I knew my gut was telling me. You know, oh. so... You know, we <laughs> learn and to trust ourselves. So I think like that's like some some solid, valuable advice that anybody can take. You know, even myself, I'll take that through my day to day. So I appreciate that. Thank you. Oh, yeah, yeah. So I mean, kind of like, can you kind of speak to like what's been your favorite project? I'm sure you probably have so many, but like, what's been like your favorite project to work on? My favorite project was a show, a Netflix project we just wrapped. Uh, mm-hmm. it's, it's called The Unbreakable Kimmy Schmidt. Um, it was a Netflix show, and now they have like an interactive special. Nice. And I liked it because it was like over 200 shots, and it had range from like CG to basic uh, phone comps and things. But it was just the challenge of mm-hmm. like I inherited this show. I inherited a show mm-hmm. from some another producer who left, and it was just like overcoming that and when you deliver like that final shot it was mm. just like, and you know it's going to be enjoyed like it's a very mm-hmm. you could be proud of you know what I mean something about the mm-hmm. work when you've done you put in the hours you put in the work and it's something to be proud of that was my Hi. my favorite I worked on Baller that was like the first one like the first one main one that like was like you know, yo, you working on a show with the rock, you know. <laughs> that was like a cool one. <laughs> that was a cool yeah. one. But it was kinda like, you know, between them two, I would say I enjoyed the process of working on their show. Mm-hmm. Awesome. Those are two like dope experiences. I mean, that you could be yeah. telling grandkids for years. <laughs> right. <laughs> for sure. <laughs> I love yeah. that. I love that. So, you know, can you kind of speak to the importance of visual effects as well as, like, where you kind of get your inspiration for projects? Because, again, I feel like people are not exposed to this, nor do they understand the relevance or why we really need this within our industry. Yeah. Um, visual effects, pretty much all the biggest grossing movies, like, throughout the past five, maybe seven years, all mm-hmm. had visual effects. If you saw The Lion King, you saw all the Marvel movies, all all of them have visual effects. And mm-hmm. visual effects just provides an extra skill set for things you can't do practically. Mm-hmm. You know, or if it's out of budget or it's uh, not possible, you know. Um, that's what it does. Um, it's gotten to the point where you don't have fantasy is what it's also called invisible effects. When somebody you're like removing signage, 
um, cleanup, a lot of cleanup work, crews, removal, and things like that. Mm -hmm. But it's used, you know, throughout everything you see. Um, the good thing is about it, it does give a creative, like the director, an option. Like I said, if you have write something that says, I need this to happen, and mm -hmm. like, how are we going to make this happen? Mm -hmm. You just have another tool, a resource to make it happen. Mm -hmm. um, I've just been trying to make sure that visual effects, even though it's now it's worldwide, it used to be like here, you had mm -hmm. to be like trained in it to do it. Right. Now it's like outsourced all over the world. There are visual mm -hmm. effects vendors and schools and things like that, where now it's so global that it's just making sure that people know you can do it. You can mm -hmm. be learning. Well, you don't have to go to school. You can learn mm -hmm. online and different mm -hmm. things. And it definitely is a uh, it's needed. It's needed. Mm -hmm. One way of, now with this pandemic happening, mm -hmm. for instance, it's now about to switch to like virtual production, mm -hmm. you know, more than ever because they don't want people, you know, social distancing, you know. Right. Like so now it's like your background people are either going to be green screened in, you know, things like mm -hmm. that, or stunts, you know, mm -hmm. facial placement. So it's, it's needed, it's used. Um, people try to avoid it. But it just adds something extra. Mm. Something extra to add the story, push the story along. Absolutely. Thank you so much for educating all of us on that. I love that. You actually got some questions from the audience, so we'll take them now. Let me see. Sure. Uh, guys, if you have questions, post them in the question box so we don't have to look through the comments if you don't mind. Someone says hard work pays off, Bill. Uh, <laughs> let's see. They said, Bill, do you have any significant supportive people? Did you have any significant supportive people during your journey? If you did, how did they support you? Yes. Um, um, early on, like even now, like my my ma my family, like my mother and sister, like you know, when you would go to school and that financial aid, you know, when checks start being a little late or whatever, <laughs> you have that kind of support, okay. and then okay. you, well, got, you start running low. <laughs> You right along. You like look here. I don't know what's happening with financial aid. But I got you in there. <laughs> you know, I just need to make it to the end. <laughs> you know. I just gotta make it to the end of my. <laughs> yes, um, you got the support. I usually had. It always roll with a team of like-minded individuals. You know, that mm -hmm. want to hit the lab. Like, what are we doing? We hitting the lab tonight. Mm -hmm. You know, so lab. I used to call them lab parties. B Y O L. Bring your own laptop. Bring your own coffee. I love it. I love <laughs> you know? that. And oh. it was kind of like the short term of like, we won't be out partying once we get there. You know, for now, let's mm -hmm. take the mm -hmm. time. So I was fortunate enough to like, while I was in school, we had crews like that, like my man, KJ, Tiffany, some people out here now, that same way, same mind, even though we all do different shout out, things. Shout out, You know, <laughs> we like just try to keep each other support and hold each other accountable. You know what I mean? Mm -hmm. And so mm -hmm. I'm thankful for that. Uh, the, my mentor, uh, the woman who got me hired, uh, Lauren, she's the, she's the first, only black female exec producer I've ever met. <laughs> and wow. she was just like, yo, we need more of us out here. Yo, if you try yeah. and get in, I got you. You know what I mean? Yes. So ever yes. since then, like, I definitely looked to her for things. Because you, as you grow, you also need somebody above you to help you transition mm -hmm. to the next level, mm -hmm. things like that. So, mm -hmm. yeah. That's solid right there. I mean, just those gems right there, you know, choosing a mentor, someone that you can look to for guidance that has already experienced the things that you experienced. And then you also mentioned even your mentor, reaching her hand back to pull people up. You know, yeah. not being closed lip and tight handed and headlocked with information, but sharing yeah. it to help, you know, build others like you're doing today. So, I mean, it sounds like you've had some amazing supportive people along your journey and even just choosing your friends wisely. Because you said yeah. you guys used to get in that lab and y'all used to be like, <laughs> hey, we'll party later, but we're going right. to get these studies and, and get to this, you know, these skills. And I think that's important choosing your friends and choosing yeah. accountability partners that's going to hold you accountable. Hey, you said you was going to do this. What's up? Right. What's up? We you all don't want to be that person that's flaking, you know, the flake will always talk about what they're going to do, you know. So when you got friends around you that saying like, yo, we was there, we was you. You kind of like, depending on the type of person you are, you're going to be like, you know what? Right. I don't right. want to be that guy. I don't be that girl. Let me go in mm -hmm. and, you know, do it. So. Because mm -hmm. talk is cheap. Talk is cheap. <laughs> <laughs> I 
I love that. You actually got another question. Someone said, what techniques do you use um, when editing? Um, when I edit, I use um, Premiere. Um, mm -hmm. well, I guess it depends on what you're editing. From editing graphics, like anything that's 2D, flat, like a logo or a signage, I use Photoshop. Um, mm -hmm. If I'm editing video, using Premiere. If it's some um, motion graphics and most quick motion graphics styles, animated mm -hmm. titles and things like I use After Effects. Nice. Awesome. Yeah. Take notes, guys. Take them down. Yes. <laughs> <laughs> So, I mean, could you kind of, I know you gave us a lot of information. You told us so many different things. You spoke about your adversities, kind of how you got into the industry, how it all started from you, for you when you were younger, just watching these video games, figuring out how this all was happening, putting this together in your, mm -hmm. your small head at that age, right. you know, and now <laughs> you've made so a career and a lifestyle out of it, and you've broke, broken down how you can take those proper steps to get where you are. So, thank you so much. You even talked about, you know, some advice that you give the younger version of yourself. So, you shared so many different gems and so much knowledge mm -hmm. with this group of people but could you kind of like narrow down three tips if you can give three tips to an artist not necessarily what they'll be doing during this quarantine because they're a bit limited but right. in reference to like in the future things that they could be doing steps that you took what is three things three three tips that you would leave with them um if i was an artist during this time like visual effects kind of revolves around like three main areas. Like if you know how to key a green screen, if you know how to track, because once you add elements in, it got to stick to your footage, you know? Mm -hmm. So mm -hmm. you got to know how to track and rotoscope. Mm -hmm. Those are like three skill sets that if you can do that, you can, you'll be employable, right? Mm -hmm. <laughs> because <laughs> cause that's, that's pretty much what it is. Like most people are keying, Shows green screen. Um, most people like say tracking, adding text. It comes in handy for motion graphics as well. Mm -hmm. And rotoscoping is a skill that just when you have to mask out things. That's just what it is. Mm -hmm. So mm -hmm. I would do that. I would recommend that for After Effects. I've been using um, a site called Video Copilot. Um, mm -hmm. That helps with that uh, for tracking. It's free. It comes with After Effects, so it's called mm -hmm. Mocha. So you can track mm -hmm. that, um, as well as keying inside there. Use key light, um, and yeah, Mocha does the tracking and rotoscoping aspect of it. Um, once you get to specific things, if you like something, like yeah, I, like I watched The Flash or whatever, I was just like, yeah, it'd be cool to figure out how to. There's like if I just Google how to create that effect that somebody mm -hmm. probably already created. So mm -hmm. I noticed the big thing too, if it's things you like, you'll have more fun working on it or trying to learn it. Mm -hmm. You know, mm -hmm. and if you're doing it for yourself, too. If you're doing it for yourself, mm -hmm. you're going to want it to look good. You're going to want it to be right. Mm -hmm. So you'll take the time to make sure that it's good. So I would do mm -hmm. things like that. Awesome. Man, you've given so much knowledge. Mm -hmm. We really, really appreciate you guys. For those that are just coming in, if you missed this uh, interview, you can always watch it on the replay on all of our social sites. We'll post them there. I went on and posted Bill's handle below, so make sure you follow him and show him some love. My handle's mm -hmm. there as well as the Fake Global handle is there. For those of you that are just coming in, we are hosting this on behalf of Fake Global, the Foundation for Artistic Talent and Empowerment. And yes, we do provide financial services and free mentorship services like you've pretty much gotten this whole free book of knowledge from Bill today. So I hope you learned something. If you didn't learn anything, you wasn't listening because even I learned something. So I hope you took notes, guys. And we really appreciate you coming in. Bill, I just want to say thank you so much on yeah, behalf of our company. Yes, you are truly thank a you. king. You wear your thank crown you. well. And you are a role model. <laughs> To so many, you know, uh, you, different males that are coming up behind you and they can look, even if they just see your page or what you're projecting onto your social media platforms, they're able to see this guy is doing this different stuff. He's in these shows. And so you really are a truly inspiration. And I'm thank inspired you. by your work as well. So thank, thank you again. You. Yes. Thank you so much for having me. And I appreciate you taking the time to, you know, and I'm just honored to show that if I can make it, and that's, you know, part of it. If I can do it, then I'm sure plenty of other people can do it as well. Wow, that's a word. Well, <laughs> peace to you, brother. I'll Thank let you, you go. All right. Yes, I'll let you go. And, you know, I hope you enjoy the rest of your quarantine. I hope we 
gonna get out of this jail soon. <laughs> right. <laughs> free us soon. <laughs> right. Well, let, let us free. <laughs> yes, let us free. Let us free. All right. Well, All right. we'll talk to you soon, okay? All right. Bye bye. Okay. Bye bye. y'all.